First Sergeant Kep here with Company D, 2nd United States Sharpshooters, doing, doing a demonstration today at our Battle of Deep Creek event near Spokane, Washington. And we're making sure that our sharpshooters stay tip top in order uh, at the target range. The sharpshooters were the uh, only unit in the Civil War allowed uh, in camp target practicing time, and we try to make full use of it. Uh, for those of you who are also Berdan sharpshooters around the country or the world uh, or interested in learning more about this sort of impression and demonstration, uh, we're going to walk you through it, talk about our documentation for how we're doing this, and so you can have a good time but also learn more about how sharpshooters train and maintain accuracy throughout the course of the Civil War. One of our primary sources of information for formulating a lot of our target shooting demonstrations comes from the original manual, A System of Target Practice. Uh, target practice during the Civil War was almost unheard of, and many soldiers took the field having never shot a rifle in their life. But sharpshooters, we had to proof in. We had to prove marksmanship ability with whatever rifle we could bring. And in order to maintain that, we would follow period instructions. This manual is a short little booklet full of period information and useful, useful plates from which to set up. We did a demonstration much like this with the table and the chair for sighting uh, at a battle near Yakima, Washington. And we have uh, photos of this in an after action report on our website at secondusss.com. Another great plate of what you're looking at right now is you see the tripods with the soldiers being lined up and taking their shots. And this whole thing talks about windage and how to set up the proper dimensions for the targets, how to set the patches. And the other thing that really stands out as sharpshooters and our target range, but also all target ranges of the time, as you, if you look down range, you see two unique people actually being fired at. During the Civil War, it was common practice to have usually a private lay beneath the target with which to mark hits and misses and to patch the target after the shooting competition or trial was completed. So after every shot, they pop up and they mark the target. The other thing that some of you may find interesting is uh, black silhouette targets must be some sort of uh, farbism or reenactorism because we use targets just like this today. Well, in fact, uh, in the original Harper's Weekly of, I believe, October 1861, you will see sharpshooters in the camp of instruction shooting at black silhouette targets very much like that, uh, painted on canvas or a drill fabric uh, or whatever they could. Sometimes it would just be uh, uh, some boards nailed together with, with, with which to shoot. Now the other thing that we have is from another Harper's Weekly article of sharpshooters at construction, we, uh, we have a reproduction of the famous Jefferson Davis target that sharpshooters would practice on and we would uh, we brought this out on one of the visits by Abraham Lincoln to our camp of instruction. Uh, Abraham Lincoln was a wonderful shot, and one of the probably the single biggest reasons we were finally issued the Sharps rifles. Uh, we were a fan of this, but uh, the president found it rather distasteful. The other thing that we have on display here is some unique examples of custom target rifle cases. Uh, each company would have target rifles in it, usually for s special duties, uh, special long distance targets. But because they were so heavy, sharpshooters rarely carried them. There were a few companies that carried uh, target rifles exclusively, but for the most part, we kept them on the wagons. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we could demonstrate this part of sharpshooter history. Uh, because target rifles were not in mass production, they were privately purchased, often handmade and custom made for the shooter. They would most likely have a custom box. Uh, these, uh, there's another rifle case over there that we'll get to. 
but these are made uh, very much in the period style of original target rifle cases with uh, period materials and whenever possible we try to keep oh. it as close to what we think and what we can find for documentation but some added details like our uh, leather handles for the target cases actually came from Maine since uh, we're company D from the state of Maine so we're gonna if you look down over here we have the captain's target rifle case where he has his field glasses, um, loading equipment, patches. Uh, so each the intent interior components would be different uh, based on the shooter's needs, what they're using it for. You would also find bullet molds, targets, uh, cleaning equipment, anything that that particular rifle would, would need. So we would spend a lot of time uh, at range, often in camp. Um, we would find all sorts of opportunities to bet on our shooting. And uh, some of the pots would get as high as several hundreds of dollars within camp. And we took great pride in practicing and marking uh, our shots. And if you go through sharpshooter history, you'll actually find original accounts of actual uh, shoot uh, shot groupings uh, by certain companies during certain competitions or tryouts. Uh, sometimes there would be competitions to, uh, between sharpshooter companies. And it's a great opportunity to bring out the public and educate them about uh, sharpshooting and target shooting of the time. And if you uh, look this way, you can see a private cook with a brass telescopic sight and uh, Private Soderling, uh, making sure he stays in top form with his model 1859 Burdan Sharps. We have other soldiers loading up in the back uh, and the captain making sure he stays in top form and making sure his men are well trained and well practiced so he knows how to deploy us properly on the battlefield.